What I'm holding here is the inscribed strip, um, which is what we're calling it for the obvious reason that it has a Latin inscription on it. Um, there, it's a strip of gold, a very heavy solid strip of gold, about five or six inches long if it was unfolded. It's, it's intriguing because at one end it's got a little engraved animal head, um, pr probably I think meant to be a serpent or a dragon of some kind. And at the other end there's a mount that obviously once held a, a stone, I'd, I'd suspect probably a garnet in keeping with the rest of the hoard. Um, but what makes this piece really interesting is the fact that engraved along both sides there's an inscription in two lines that's taken from the text of the Latin Bible. And the translation would be along the lines of Arise, O Lord, and may your enemies be scattered, and may those who hate you flee from your face. It's got very, very obvious nailing marks there, and there are two other holes where there have been more nails, so it's been fastened to something else. And what we're wondering at the moment is, could this be one arm of a much larger cross that was actually nailed onto a wooden shrine or reliquary that maybe held the, held the remains of a saint. Um, because it's got to be something fairly substantial. This is a very, very solid piece of gold and it, it needs something quite, quite sturdy to be attached to. The inscribed strip is the piece that um, provoked most discussion about date when the hoard was first, first discovered. Generally, I think the opinion is settling down now that it's, it does fit in quite nicely with the rest of the hoard, which would mean that the, it, this piece was deposited in about 650, 670 or thereabouts. It really does sit in, in that crossover period when the Anglo-Saxons are going from being pagans to being Christians. One particularly interesting feature of this object is that it, it has the same inscription on both sides. I mean, it's, it's what I'll call the front and the back, or the, the outside and the inside. There are two schools of thought that try and explain what's going on here. Um, one school of thought says that by putting the inscription on both sides, you double the power of that inscription. And it doesn't matter whether you can't see both sides, um, that inscription is still there. So there's, there's a sort of double magic effect from it. Um, and then there's the more practical side who would say that um, probably they laid the inscription out on one side and made, made a mistake, got it wrong, got the layout wrong and flipped it over and did it properly on the other side. The reason I chose this particular object to be in, in our top 10 is um, that it, it's, it's a very peculiar thing to find. I mean, we have a hoard which is predominantly, apparently, made up of military kit. And then we have this very, very obviously Christian piece, along with a couple of um, other Christian crosses. Um, why is it there? And I think, I think the inscription is quite telling. Um, this, this, it's a very warlike inscription. And if we're right, and this piece does come from something like a reliquary, then we may actually be looking at 7th century psychological warfare in action. Because if, if I'm a newly converted Christian king, and I'm going into battle against my enemies, I want my new god on my side, and hopefully putting fear of god into the opposition. Um, so you, you can actually see something like this as a, a military piece of military kit in terms of the 7th century. Presumably, if the hoard does represent battle loot, then the psychological warfare didn't work because it does look as if whoever was using this lost. Watch out for more films in this series. In September, a special issue of History West Midlands explores the fascinating story of Anglo-Saxon Mercia and the hoard. Subscribe now and register for our free newsletter. In October, a new permanent gallery opens at Birmingham Museum and Art Gallery. The Staffordshire Hoard is owned jointly by Birmingham City Council and Stoke-on-Trent City Council.